Pixie's Sims, and we are back with more Psychedelic of the Black Butterfly, and we're continuing down the common route, sort of, I guess. I mean, I don't know where we're going. We're about to go see Hikage again, because we have the last shard. Anyway, with our trusty, untrusted friends, something like that. <laughs> so they've known where we are all along. Well, what are you going to do, Benny Uri? Why would you even need to ask? She can't actually be considering going. This has, it's a huge trap written all over it. We can't go get back on, we can't get back to our world without the kaleidoscope. And he has it. We want to go back. We're going to have to see him one way or the other. We sit in a circle in the grass discussing our plans. Of course, our topic is what Usaki told us earlier. The Kage is summoning me. Me with the final kaleidoscope shard. I have to wonder why it was in my hairpin in the first place, though. No matter how much I try to figure it out, nothing seems to come to mind. I can't stand it, because we picked up the first piece, remember? We picked up the first piece. Well, Natsuki gave us the first piece. So, mm -hmm. maybe? I don't know. Or he's like the darkness inside of uh, Kazuya. So I don't know. How about we ambush him? What? I was thinking the same thing. I guess it only makes sense. What do you mean by ambush? Well, he's busy talking to you. Catch him off guard and steal a kaleidoscope. Even if he has it on him, he can't hold all of us off at once. Stealing it, though? That sounds dangerous. But that might be her only way. Even if you're on board with this... Even you're on board with this, Monshiro? Isn't there some way we could talk this out with him? He used to be our friend. Maybe he has his own reasons for doing this. You actually think that would work? It might be hard, but I don't like the idea of giving up before we even try. Mm-hmm. We might be able to come to some kind of an understanding. So I think we should give it a chance. <laughs> wow, you really are something. That's a special kind of uh, naivety you've got going there. Karsuba's loud laughter pierces my ears. He pointed a gun at you. You realize that, right? He tried to kill you. Dead. And then Kagia took the bullet protecting you from him. And you want to sit down for a little talk with him? Well, I... I mean, it's cute that you're all innocent like that, but it's time to put your grown-up pants on and face reality. Yo, cool it with that. Hikage can't be trusted. You just need to keep him busy, Benny Yuri. Take care of the rest. But it'll be fine. We got a shot in on him last time. Just leave it to us. I'll be like, you know what? Again, now you're underestimating me. Fuck all of you. Yamato smiles gently at me, trying to ease my fears. You know what? Spacey's true ending to this game is I'm not going to date any of you because you suck. You know what? We're going to Hakage because you know what? You guys suck. You might have tried to kill me. <gasps> he was the one that got stabby. <laughs> he didn't really get stabby. He got shooty, but still it counts. Oh, somebody caught that, I'm sure. Um, I obviously have not posted that part uh, where he tried to get shooty with us because, you know. So I'm sure someone saw it and went, ah, and pointed that out that I missed that on the game. But there you go. Getting stabby with it. It doesn't count. It doesn't matter if he's stabbing us, shooting us, or rather trying to physically harm us. It counts as getting stabby with it. That was just there because of St. Germain. Oh. And then I look at my cards from my limited edition of the Code Realize, you know, PS4 game. They're just sitting up on my shelf and I'm just looking at St. Germain and he's there with this little... Oh, me? Yes, you. <laughs> you little bastard. I love you. Anyway. Still, something about it pains me. I'll take care of it. I have to face reality. Even though you guys won't tell me anything. You don't treat me like an equal. And I watch as the three of them discuss their plans, feeling left out and alone. I'm the only one who doesn't know anything. I'm the only one who can't do anything. Trapped in a cage of their kindness, I feel more alone than ever. I like how they started fading away. 
Um, I think she should sneak out while they're talking and go do this. You're the one he's asking for. So you make the call when we do this. We can leave him hanging for a little while. Betty, Yuri, what will you do? I... There's no time to waste. I want to go now. I'd be like, you know what? Um, Why don't we all just take a nap and then we'll go. You guys, are you asleep? Okay, bye. Going by myself. You sure you're okay with that? You fucking asked. Yes. Stop second guessing me. I'm going to fucking kick you. Yeah. We can't wait here forever. And I'm worried about Kagia. Kagiha. Can't fucking say his name. Anyway. True enough, I suppose. Their worried faces are lined up before me. That's all right. We've got our trump card. The last shard. It won't do anything too rash. Let's go to him tomorrow. I'm going to go to him tonight. Afterwards, we first discuss whether or not we'll be able to negotiate with Akage. And then whether or not we'll be able to return to our world. And whether or not the kaleidoscope is really the key to doing so. As the conversation continues, my head gradually starts to feel caught in a haze of uncertainty. I want to go back to our world, but I believe the way to do that was together, as friends who trusted one another. Even with all my sadness, all my pain, neither words nor tears escape from me. We finish deciding our plan of action for tomorrow, and then head off to bed early in the hopes of being ready for whatever awaits us. <laughs> Oh. Interesting. Wait a minute. Okay. So there's like a... Oh. Okay. 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 Oh. Oh. What are these three things? Okay. So we can't... We can't zoom out anymore. I hate the fact that that's the only... Oh, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. I hate the fact that that's the only... That's for... Oh, we can still watch... Oh, that's true. Those are the... Other guys kind of route things. Turf war? What's that? Hold on. These are all the individual guys' episodes. These are ones that we can't watch. We can watch those other ones, but... Hold on. Those ones we can't unlock, but I'm still curious about what this one is, this turf war one. When did we unlock this? Old memory playing with others. Huh. Well, let's watch this. Let's just watch this before we go to Chapter 7. One day after school, we all decide to go to the park to play. It's the usual group of Natsu, Aki, and myself. But on this particular day, Takuya and Kazuya are already at the park when we get there. Natsu suggests that we should all play together. But with such a large group, we can't make up our minds on what to do. Kazuya and Takuya want to play soccer. Or at least Takuya insists they do. Let's play kick... Let's play kick the can, I say. Aki and Natsu agree. But Takuya and Kazuya won't budge even a little. Okay, here's the thing. You want to play kick the can. How is that any... Could you... We could just do it with a soccer ball and then call it soccer. It's like the same fucking thing. You're kicking something around, right? I don't know what kick can is. I don't really know the point. But I'm just thinking it sounds a little bit similar to soccer. So I'm just saying you could just compromise and play fucking soccer. Since neither group wants to give in to the other, we find ourselves at a standstill. Each of us standing and glaring at each other. That sounds about right. That's what we're doing now. This is a good one to do. I want to play soccer. We need 11 people to play soccer. There aren't enough of us. We'll just change the rules. We don't have to worry about positions and stuff. Yeah, you could just run around and kick the ball. Like, let's kick the can, essentially, right? You're kicking something. I don't know. And I'll be the referee. We wouldn't even need... We, we wouldn't have even teams if there were five of us playing... Such a lazy bum. Everyone's going to hate you if you keep trying to force your opinion on them. Shut up. Are you even going to be able to play? You were coughing up a lung the other day. I, I'm perfectly fine now. I can do it. Now, now, everyone. Let's not fight. Yeah, we kind of decide quick or the sun's going to set and we'll just have to go home. Can I just go and draw by myself? I told you already, Kaz. We're going to play together. Why do you have to go off on your own? Kazuya is amazing. I wish I could just say what's on my mind like he does. Don't compliment him. He's just trying to screw stuff up. Everyone continues shouting over one another, and we make no progress towards a decision. I would just walk away. In the end, Aki and uh, Takuya start to argue. I just want everyone to get along and have a good time. I don't want to fight. 
But I also really want to play kick the can, so I don't want to budge on that either. You know what's really funny is like, so like this, like, okay, Takuya being like a dick to her and like, whatever, shut up, leave me alone. And like he, f him fighting with Aki, that's exactly how Yamato and fucking Karasubo were, right? Totally bickering. And the same kind of like Hikage and Yamato doing the same thing the way they treat each other. It's so funny that their personalities when we first get is exactly the same as they were when they were kids. Like you have that little, little bickering and you, they don't even understand it. And then you have Kakia who's always like, oh, hey, guys, I'm trying to be rational. I'm trying to be the adult. I'm like, okay, it's, I'm trying to mediate. But you know what? Sometimes I'm just going to walk away because I can't do this. I'm like, we're like in the middle. And even the way Takuya is with us, shut up, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, he's treating us the same way. It's just kind of funny. Like, yes, obviously they're a little bit more mature, but they still have their quarreling and their bickering. Their personalities are still kind of there. It's kind of interesting. Like, Yamato's a little bit more of a marshmallow on the inside, I think, but he's still, like, kind of gruff and, like, whatever, shut up! <laughs> like, especially when we first all got together, it's like our personalities were back to being wh where we were when we were kids. <sighs> kind of funny. Without realizing, you know? Like, just the clashing. Anyway. Ugh, now what? How about this, then? In a quiet, clear voice, Natsu gets everyone's attention. It looks as though neither side is going to yield in this little debate of ours. Nope. That's true. Me neither. Nor me. So in that case, how about we just do things in order? In order? What does that mean? We'll just play kick the can after soccer. That way, everyone gets to play what they want. I can't really argue with that. Yeah, but if we start with soccer, Takuya might never want to stop playing. We'll set a time then. 30 minutes on one, and we'll switch to the other. Sound good? Natsu looks at everyone for their reactions. This is why we love him. He's so smart. And squishy and adorable, and he's the only one that we trust right now because the other ones are being assholes, and they're not telling me secrets, and he's just got shot for me, so I can't be mad at him. It's a perfect compromise, so no one can say anything in opposition. I don't mind. Same for me. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, me too. Great, I'm glad you're all okay with it. Well, let's go with the ladies' pick first. Oh, come on! You just pick the game you want to play first. Oh, oops. You want to play soccer first, then? We just settled this, Takuya. Shut up. Fine, we'll play kick the can first, then. All right, then. We'll do rock, paper, scissors to decide who goes first. Everyone gathers around Natsu and readies their hands. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! You're at first, Takuya. Ch, fine. It's what you get for everything you make... Oh, it's what you get for everything you make people put up with all the time. You're one to talk. Shut up! There you go again. Takuya, try to burn off some of the tension trying to catch us. Takuya seems okay with the suggestion. He puts one hand on his hip and points at us. Get ready, then. Okay, here we go. Not two places... Plays a soda can on the ground. Places a soda can on the ground? Ha! He kicks it way into the air. Ah, run away! Oh no, where should I hide? Kick the can is like a hide-and-seek game? This is a little bizarre. I've never played kick the can. I don't know. Like, I had... I... I just... We, we played other things when I was a kid. I don't know. I didn't grow up in the 1950s, so I'm just saying. Like, this to me does not sound like... This doesn't, this is like something that people played in like the 50s or 60s here when you were a kid. Like, I just don't think this happened like back when I was a kid. Like, we didn't do shit like this. Like, what decade are you in, Japan? Jesus. Like, meanwhile, their technology is like, you know, 2032 and their kids' games are like 1950. You're like, I'm just really confused as to what's going on here. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Don't go too far, everyone. Okay, mom. Okay, mom. <laughs> Run all you want. I'll find you no matter where you hide. Takuya eggs us on as he sets up the can. As I stand around flustered, Natsu pulls my hand. This way. What? Uh, okay. I go with him and hide behind a large tree. You wanted to play this, you dumb fuck. You should know how to play it. Uh, where'd they all go? Slowly, Takuya inches closer to us. We gotta do something. He's gonna find us at this rate. Hmm, maybe over here. 
Takuya, oh, maybe over here. Takuya points at the tree we're hiding behind and starts to approach it. He knows. Come on, think of something. He'll find us. I close my eyes tightly, trying to make myself as inconspicuous as possible. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Natsu holds my hand like he always does, and I squeeze his in return. You're just playing a game. God, why are you freaking out? Maybe right about here. His footsteps stop just short of our hiding place. In the next instant... Over there! A loud noise comes from the opposite direction. Takuya immediately whirls on his feet. Real, whirls on his feel. I know I've had a... I know I've been drinking beer. But I'm pretty sure that that's not right, anyway. Takuya immediately whirls on his feet and runs towards some shrubbery in the distance. It's a very nice shrubbery. Like the laurels, especially. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Found you, Kaz! Yeah, you got me. Last wig. Kazuya stands up, scratching his head and looking a little troubled. Obviously, I'm going to find you if you make that much noise. I'm pretty slow. Yeah, you got me. <laughs> Naturally. Takuya looks very pleased with himself as he returns to the can and steps on it. Okay, Kaz, go stand by the tree over there. Kazuya shuffles over to a tree near the can and stands in silence. Kazuya sure saved us. We owe him one. Huh? It takes me a moment to figure out what Natsu is talking about. You think he made the noise on purpose so we wouldn't get caught? Alright guys, sorry. So, <laughs> um, I am having to edit these two parts together because my capture card, well, stopped recording because my drive was full. Um, I normally have tons of space, but the Elgato saves a backup file and like while it's processing and it they take up a ton of fucking space. And I usually go through and clear them out, but... I guess I wasn't paying attention and I've been recording a lot today. So there was a lot of stuff on there. So, um, so it stopped recording. So I got a few, a little, like a couple minutes ahead of this. Um, and I glanced over and I was like, fuck. So thank God we didn't miss too much. We were still in the scene, so it's fine. But anyway, we were in the middle of reading this line and I started reading it and then it cut off. So we missed when I loved, made fun of the lovely, that wee wee don't get discovered. But anyway, it's possible. Let's move somewhere else for now. So, uh, move somewhere else for now, though, so that we don't get discovered instead of that we we don't get discovered. That's not right. God damn it, Tim. I mean, I've been drinking, but Jesus. He takes my hand and we move to some bushes behind the slide. Damn it. Where are you? Takuya over here. Tauntingly, Aki shouts at Takuya from his hiding spot behind, behind another tree. What? Aki, I know you're there. Aki quickly ducks into his hiding spot once again, but it's too late. A moment later, Takuya easily discovers him. Gotcha, Aki. Aw, he got me. Still, he doesn't look terribly disappointed as he walks over to stand next to Kazuya. Come on, you guys. You should think harder when you're picking hiding spots. Yeah, true. I got a little cocky. Aki gives us a significant glance. Natsu nods back at him. We need to split up now. What? I'll draw Takuya's attention. While, while I do, you go and kick the can. But you'll get caught. Are you sure? Hold on. I'm going to itch my ear underneath my headset. It'll be fine, so long as you kick the can and rescue us later on. I, I'm i not sure I can do it. Takuya's so fast. You can do it, Spacey. I believe in you. He's so fucking adorable. Those two should be around here somewhere. Takuya circles around towards the bush we're hiding in. Oh, hiding behind. My heart feels as though someone's squeezing it. When I give the signal, run for it. What? From this far away, Takuya won't be able to catch up with you. Okay. I'm counting on you. That's who gives me a reassuring pat on the head. I think I had gotten about to hear. I don't think I read this line. And then, like, and I looked over, so we really only missed a couple minutes. It gives me confidence. I can do it. I know I can. Okay, yeah, we hadn't read this at all. All right, let's start the mission. Natsu stands up slightly, just enough for his head to poke up through the bush. That hair color. Natsuki! Takuya notices him and starts making his way towards the bush. Natsu, ta ta uh, Takuya's coming this way. Are you sure this is a good idea? Trust me. He's almost here. Just a few more steps and he'll... Now! Got it! 
Aha! Gotcha, Natsuki! Hey! I jump out of the bush and sprint past Akuya towards the can. It's only a few meters, but it feels oddly distant. Yeah! Shouldn't scream that loud, sorry. I kick the can as hard as I can, sending it flying. Aki and Kazuya come running towards me. You did it, Spacey! Phew, I pulled it off! Good job, Spacey. My sacrifice was totally worth it. Yeah, great job. Damn it. I'm it again? Takuya starts stamping his feet. <laughs> Sorry, Takuya. Ugh, isn't time to play soccer by now? I'm trying to change the subject, aren't you? Shut up. Well, Natsuki. Natsu shrugs. He looks over at Takuya as he fumes and then over at the clock tower. With a laugh, he speaks. Haha. <laughs> Unfortunately, you still got about 15 minutes. Aw, oh, crap. <laughs> Good luck, Takuya. I'll trade places with you, Takuya. You can't just switch. Do you not get how this game works? Don't fight again, Takuya. I'm sure you'll find us real quickly. You made short work of it last time, too. Er, yeah, I guess. Okay, fine. One more time. I'll put the can up this time. Kazuya stands the can up and gives it a soft kick. The can hangs in the air for a moment, then comes clattering to the ground. Oh, come on! That was weak! Kick it harder! Sorry. Hey, we're already going. If you're not it, run! Hokey dokey! Right! Uh-oh. Natsu signals to everyone, and we all take off running. Before I know it, he's taking my hand once again. Aki and Kazuya look over at us. They'll be just like before. If we all cooperate, we can kick it, kick the can every time. Although if Takuya were to find me and I was it, I think that might be kind of fun too. It was so much fun being able to play with everyone. At the time, I truly believed this would go on forever and ever. And then you grew up and they stopped being your friend. Okay. All right, cool. So now we can go back. This thing is so confusing. Okay, we're going back here. All right. Chapter 7. This could be her last night in this world. I lay on the grass carpeting in the... Uh, I lie on the grass carpeting the ground and gaze up. Unsurprisingly, the glass roof is shrouded in mist. When we finish the kaleidoscope tomorrow, will we be able to return to a world with a star-filled night sky? Worry and anticipation crash over me like waves. And even on a night like this, I still hear their hushed whispers. I might end up taking on Akage, so it's only natural that they try to plan it carefully. And yet, I can't help but find it hurtful that they'd hold another secret meeting, even after we'd all agreed to call it a night. <sighs> I breathe a long, dejected sigh. I know tomorrow's our big day, but I feel as if my heart is withering away. In the beginning, none of us had any of our memories, and we could hardly tell them tell left from right. So many strange and frightful things have happened, and I felt like I could face them because I wasn't alone. It's different now, though. I'm the only one without my memories. I remember more than I did before, but I'm also lonelier and more worried. Kiki, uh, I've been trying to avoid thinking about him, but I still whisper his name. He was hurt trying to protect me. He smiled for me, even with such a grave injury. Warmth and pain alike flow through me at the thought of it. With so many emotions building up inside me, all I want to do is cry. I remember when he told me... If you don't let the tears flow when you want to cry, you won't be able to smile later on. And if you can't smile, you'll eventually forget how, and then you'll feel even worse. So, don't hold back. He's still the Victor character, so it's even funnier that, like, it's not Victor that voices him, right? Like, he comforted me at a time like this, but now I'm absolutely overcome with emotion, but oddly, the tears just won't come. I wonder if the isolation I felt over the past few days has caused my heart to wither. Kagea, are you okay? I want to see you so badly. Not so... roll over onto my side and shut my eyes. 
Try as I might, I just can't sleep. Within the darkness, my other senses feel even more alive. Patchy grass beneath me, the cold night air, the smell of the plants. There's one thing I notice more than anything else. That thing is... Huh, what do I notice? Oh god. Oh god. I don't know. Mm, I... I... I don't know what to choose. I feel like, honestly... To be straight up honest, that what would she be noticing? She'd be noticing the sound of rain, right? Oh, it does throb. Okay, that's weird. Because that's the legitimate... That's what you'd notice, right? You're laying there, blah, blah, blah. You notice the sound of the rain because it's raining every night. So I feel like that's the obvious normal answer. So I'm really more curious at this point of what a faint light is. I don't know what to choose. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Oh, God. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't think... I, we're going to get... An, I don't think we're getting a bad ending if we choose one or the other, but I'm just... It's curious to me, because, like... What, I don't... Yeah. I think I'm going to go with light. Because I feel like the sound of the rain is the normal... Like, that's what... I know that she'd hear the sound of the rain. Because it rains every night there, right? But... I want to go with a light because that's different. And I feel like there's something about that that's... Who knows what that could be? So I'm going to choose that. Huh? Oh, uh-oh. I, I don't know what I did, but... I open my eyes and see something twinkling. The scenery around me has changed ever so slightly, but I feel as though something is floating near the entrance. What is that? I wake up and walk towards the light. Oh, maybe this was a bad thing to do. Quietly, I slip out of the greenhouse, alone. None of them notice me leaving. What could that light be? I thought it was something outside. Maybe it's a white butterfly. There didn't seem to be anything particularly strange about it. Amidst the quiet thrum of the rain, I look around. Maybe this is a bad ending, I don't know. I don't see anything, so I turn to make my way back up the long stairway leading to the greenhouse. At that moment... Hmm? Sensing someone's presence, I immediately turn... <gasps> the face before me is one I've longed to see. Kia? Yes. No words come to me. <gasps> my lips move, but my tongue doesn't seem to work. My eyes fixate on the figure of the person before me. Is this an illusion? Why is Kagia here? No, I don't even care if he is. I... I walk close and reach out to him. And then... Kagia... Natsu... Natsu... He's making us touch his face! We could have been grabbing him, but... He's got his hand holding ours against his face. Hand holding. There you go. Oh my god! How many points have you got on the board so far, guys? I don't even like want to know. I do want to know. It's Oh god, it's great. I leap into his arms without thinking. I really should be playing along, too. You know what I mean? Like, I should just have, like... One stuck to the wall, like, above my computer, but... I just want to be closer to him. I want to feel his warmth... I grab his clothes and rub my cheeks onto them. Kukia, it's really him. I cling to him so tightly that our clothes bunch up. He brings my hand to his face and hugs me back. Yeah, he totally did that. I... I... You don't have to say a word. I know. I missed you so. I missed you too. I was so, so worried. I know you were scared. 
I know you were worried, and I'm sorry I left you by yourself. Oh my god. Mm. I'm sorry I made you cry. I'm so sorry to have hurt you. No, it's all right. I... The warmth of his body and his words caused his tears to start welling up in my eyes. Why was I holding back? He told me I didn't need to do anything and protected me. But on the other hand, it's so cold. I want to cry, but I can't. I lied to my friends that told me they understood, and I threw away the place where I belonged. All my pent-up emotions begin to melt down. Please, don't go anywhere. Don't leave. For a while, we embrace one another in silence. He continues to hold me. After I've calmed down, I slowly pull myself away. In part, it's because I'm embarrassed, but also it's because I couldn't see his face from where I was. I take Agia's hand and look into his face. He smiles back at me with clear eyes. You're okay? Yes. You ran away from Hakage? Yes. And your wounds, they were deep, weren't they? Are you okay to be moving? Yes. His replies are terse, but gentle. It hasn't really been that long, but it feels like we haven't seen each other in forever. Yes, it certainly does. It's wrong. You just keep repeating yourself. He smiles faintly. Oh god, he's not. Oh god. Oh god, you're not. Oh no. Oh god, this is not. This. Is... Oh god, you're not like really like. I'm going to disappear into the ether. No! He's not actually like, dead dead. Oh god. Benieri, I have a favor to ask of you. You do? That's why I've come here tonight. What do you want? Oh god. Kagiya reaches out and touches my cheek. Oh god, is this bad? I want something precious to you. Will you give that to me? What? Something precious? Yes, something precious. <gasps> Is it Hakage for real? Hiding, un pretending to be a Kagiha? Oh god, no. Um, for example, your violet ribbon. Why does he, why does he know about Monshiro's ribbon? Is that all right? Um, Monshiro gave it to me, so I can't do that. Okay, this is this is tripping me up. This can't be this this isn't him. As long as you possess it, we can't return to life together. Huh? Things that we become attached to will chain our souls to this world. I want to return to where we came from with you. That's why you can't keep the ribbon. You do want to go back, don't you? Yes. Then please, will you give it to me? His fingers, his voice, his words. What he says gently tickles my ear. Ask him a question only he would know. A shiver runs through me and my thoughts seem to melt away. As if ensnared by some hypnotic spell, my thoughts start to become hazy. <gasps> it's not really him, is it? The ribbon is important. Monshiro gave it to me, but I can't return to the real world if I have it. Finally together... But now we're just going to be separated again? No, I don't want that. Shall we return together? You will give me the ribbon, won't you? Yes. Wonderful. That makes me so happy. I remove the violet ribbon from my pocket and hand it to Kagia. Not him. It has wrapped itself around my hand as, it, as though it doesn't want to leave me. Oh... He had twirls it around his hand and pulls it away. A small doubt prickles at the back of my mind. Wonderful. The expression of relief on his face as he stands, ribbon in hand, makes me forget all of my doubts. It's not him. He takes a step back and slips the ribbon into his pocket. If I have that ribbon, we can't go back? No. And I don't have it. 
we really can go back. Without leaving anyone behind. Together. Yes, I'm certain we can. It'll be alright. He looks me straight on, and there's a hint of sadness in his eyes. I'm sorry, I have to go. What? Where are you going? I thought we were going to be together. I'm sorry. We'll be able to see each other very soon. Could you keep my presence here a secret from the others? Why, Kagia? Please. Okay, I'll keep it a secret. <laughs> You're a good girl. He pats my head and stares hard at me. With that, he turns around and leaves. I don't think that was him. I don't... Alone now in the hallway, the rain seems louder than before. The mysterious rain that falls with the coming of each night. This will be the last time we hear it. I don't think that was him. Tomorrow we'll complete the kaleidoscope and return to our world. Why does she look really fucking creepy? I'm glad. I guess I shouldn't have held on to that ribbon. Now we can go back. Everything will go back to normal at last. We can all go back. Something bad. I think that was something bad. I don't know. I don't, is that a bad end? Okay. No, it's normal. Okay. I don't remember how I got back. When I came to my senses, I was lying on the grass in the greenhouse. I want to see something. Oh. Okay. So whatever other choice would have been that end. Okay. Wait, no. I just want to just go back because we were already... Okay. Well, okay. I awaken slowly, awash in the lazy feeling I get whenever I oversleep. I don't think that was him. I don't think that was him. Did I just lay down and sleep here last night? Was meeting Kagia just a dream? How could that possibly have been? Alright, let's roll. You ready? Yeah, I'm fine. So we're finally gonna say goodbye to this world. Shh, it's not over yet. We're just getting started. Yeah. We look at one another as we head out of the greenhouse. We're headed off to the master's headquarters, wherever that may be. What's up, booger? What's the matter? Are you just being crazy? Okay. As Usagi promised, there are black butterflies clumped up in various places throughout the hall. These must be the signs guiding us to him. It's so quiet. It's so silent in the hall that I can hear my own heartbeat. Normally we'd hear the roar of the monsters from somewhere within the manor. Maybe they're hiding, waiting for the storm to pass. I can't hear anything that sounds remotely like them. We walk along the long carpet in silence. Soon we arrive in front of a room. This is... This hallway was supposed to be endless. The same scenery would continue on and on and on and we'd be forced to turn back. But now we can see the end. He's behind this door. We made it. Yep. Silence. And more silence. We know what we have to do. Knock, knock. Hey! We'll open this door, step inside, and face the cause of all of this. There's no need to hesitate. Even so, none of us dares to lay a hand on the heavy door handle. We're frozen to the spot, and then we hear voices inside. Kage, will you truly keep your promise? You just won't quit, will you? You really should do something about that obnoxious personality of yours. I wonder if... The, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be... I'm assuming it's... Um, Kagiha and Hikage speaking back and forth. But anyway, don't change the subject. I've done everything you asked. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I've got something fun up my sleeve. Wait, these voices... There are two of them. One belongs to our enemy. The other, a gentle one I know well. Why are they talking like they're old friends? Ah, here they are now. Kagiha. Suddenly there's a flash of blinding white light. And then in the next instant... Whoa. A fierce gust of wind blows the doors open and I can see into a vast open space. The hell is up with this room? Whoa, creepy. 
Like the whole place is churning. Makes me feel like I'm drunk. You guys. The first thing I see are bright, vibrant, uh, bright, vivid colors. So bright, in fact, that they're practically blinding. The light shining in from the glass windows is too ominous to be sunlight. Too clear for moonlight. The pure white marble floors glitter in a multitude of colors. What? I don't know what to say. What is this place? The warp scene before us fills me with a vague sense of dread. All I want to do is run away, but my eyes are transfixed. It's both divine and foreboding. I feel dizzy as though I'm barely hanging on to my sanity. Kage and Kagiha. The two of them stand before us amidst this toxic garden. Is Kagiha bad? In the center of the space is Akage, looking calm and composed. Kagiya is beside him, looking shocked. Such a rude woman. Quite the eavesdropper. No! Benayuri! Akage, it isn't time yet! What's going on here? Why is Kagiya with Akage? He stands there in silence, a bitter expression on his face. <laughs> I wanted to see how you'd look. They would have found us before long anyway. So it was a, just a bit of theater for fun. Tch. Ever the consummate scumbag. Kagiha. Akage. Ah, oh, my useless guard dogs. How nice to see you again. I could have done without it myself. You're just happy because the last shard is here. That's true. Isn't it obvious? The kaleidoscope. It's right next to Kakage. On the throne beside him. Of course he's on a throne. The kaleidoscope shines more brightly than ever before. But what I'm even more curious about... Kagiha, what's going on here? Why are you with Akage? Benayuri, how are you and K Kagiha connected? <laughs> if it's so difficult for you to say, I'll do it for you. No, she... She's... I can't take this anymore. Why won't anyone tell me anything? Why aren't you surprised that Kagiya's here with him? Who is Hakage? Why are you pretending to be... Why you pretend... Why did you pretend to be our ally? Why, why, why? My bottled up emotions... My bottled up emotions erupt. I had hoped to be calmer when this moment came. We're facing the master of the manor. I have to be calm. I have to calm myself down. But the dark emotions inside me have boiled over and I can't stem the tide now. Why did I do it? Isn't it obvious? To gather the shards. The easiest way to guide the herd is to become a part of it. And the more you trust me, the more you despair when I betray you. Destruction. I've always done this and I always will. What do you even want, Hikage? What wish do you want granted with the kaleidoscope? That's none of your concern. It's a wish you're so desperate to make come true... But you're willing to tear us all apart like this? Please, don't hurt us like that. Hurt you? <laughs> Why are you laughing? The mirth in his piercing laughter slowly turns to contempt. Because it's funny. You've hidden away in an inconvenient memory. You alone have plun uh, plunged yourself into the lukewarm broth that is friendship. I'm surprised you can say that. You what? Let me ask you then. Have you ever hurt anyone? Have you ever done something you can't take back? Obviously, but we don't know. Are you in any position at all to reprimand me? What's that supposed to mean? Let's discuss the past a bit. We still haven't gotten to the juiciest parts. Oh god. What are you talking about? Long ago there was a girl. There were four boys she was wonderful friends with. And they always played together. And one summer day, the grown-ups brought them to the lake. To a lake far removed from civilization. Lush trees, clean air. They enjoyed themselves so much they broke their promise to the grown-ups. No, you can't! Stop, you don't have to tell her! Kage interrupts their protest by firing his gun at the ceiling. Ch -ch -ch. You all have no manners at all. Tisk tisk. Actually, you know. You all have no manners at all. 
Don't you know it's rude to interrupt someone when they're speaking? Can't you see she's listening intently? Ikage, are you talking about one of my memories? Yes, Benny Yuri. This is what you wanted to remember, and also what you didn't want to remember. About what happened at su oh, uh, ha about what happened at summer camp? He smiles coldly, making his way towards me. I think he's a, the evil side of... That's why he looks like Takuya. He's the evil side of Takuya. No, not Takuya. Kazuya. <laughs> Whatever. I can't remember. Their names are too funny. Get away from her. It's not me who wants to draw near. It's her. What? You want the truth, don't you? But you should have already remembered. The truth? That's right. You should already know. Try and remember. The alluring sweetness of his whispers shakes the small box locked inside me. The box was supposed to have been locked. And yet the lid opens easily. My memories pour out of it, flowing endlessly back into place. Lines stretch outward, connecting the uh, to separate dots of my memory. My true self is revived. Before they knew it, it had gotten dark outside, and rain began to splash down onto the roof and windows. It's, it's starting to rain. You're right. It's so loud. The clouds have been gathering for quite some time, but they hadn't noticed. Totally caught up in their exploration. Mountain weather changes quickly. We should head back to the campsite before it gets any worse. The rest of the group nods in agreement, and together they hurry out of the manor. Whoa, what the heck? Just as they arrive outside, Takuya shouts in despair. The rainfall outside the manor was far heavier than they had expected. The route back is flooded. It seems as though the rain has caused the lake to rise, and it threatens to completely submerge the path before long. What are we going to do? We've got to hurry! Oh no. Are we going to be okay? There's no need to be too afraid. Just stay calm and follow the path carefully. If one of us slips and breaks something, we'll be in trouble. Everyone follows Natsuki's instructions, crossing the path cautiously. He himself goes last so that he can keep a close eye on his friends. With each step, they feel the uncomfortable sensation of water filling their shoes. There's no time to worry about it. Phew! We made it, somehow! Aki and Takuya reach the shore first and let out cries of relief. Soon after, Kosuya follows, but... Hey! He cries out and suddenly stops. What's wrong, Kazuya? The ribbon! It's gone! His face going pale, Kazuya points at his knee where... Uh, Painful-looking scrapes were exposed to the air. It looks as though the ribbon that Spacey had tied on his leg had come undone as they walked around. It doesn't look like it fell off here, so maybe it came undone somewhere in the manor. I'm gonna get it! I'm gonna go get it. No, don't! It's dangerous! He's right. What if the path gets submerged while you're on your way back? Kazuya, they're right. Don't worry about the ribbon! As they all try to convince him not to go, Kazuya just keeps shaking his head. I promise that I'd give it back. I'll go and get it. So you guys should just go on ahead. I'd be like, no, we can come get it another time. So, oh, I get it. Oh, he's going to blame us. Oh, that ribbon, it's all your fault, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know what? You were the asshole who went back for it, and I told you not to worry about it, dumb fuck. Don't pay this on me. Hey, Kazuya, wait! Shaking off his brother, Kazuya starts running along the rapidly sinking path. I'll go with him. I'll be right back. I'll come too. I'll worry if it's just the two of you. I'll worry if just the two of you go. You guys stay here, though. What? Hey, wait up, everyone. The heavy rain makes it harder and harder to see the three of them as they run back toward the manor. Aki and Takuya can only watch, worry on their faces. Takuya has it. That's why he blames himself, because he took the ribbon. Together, they run back toward the manor, getting completely soaked through. I've got to find it fast. Where could it be? We only walked around in this area. We should be able to find it pretty quickly. It'll be faster if we split up. As Natsuki suggested, the three of them split off in different directions in search of the ribbon. Their eyes peeled carefully, they retrace their steps. Eventually, Kasuya discovers the ribbon sitting on the floor of the manor. Oh, I guess it was still there. Yes, I found it! 
It's unusual to hear Kazuya raise his voice. He holds the ribbon up to show Spacey and Natsuki. I'm glad we found it so fast. Yeah, I have to give it back to you no matter what. I know it's really important to you. Kazuya squeezes the ribbon tightly. Spacey smiles and takes his hand. You can give it back later. For now, we gotta get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. The rain is getting even stronger. We don't want to keep the others waiting too long. At Natsuki's urging, the three run out of the manor. He's gonna drown. <clears throat> As they arrive outside, they notice the rain has grown even stronger. The water level on the path has risen to, risen to Spacey's knees. No, wait, now what? This is not good. Hey, hey, can you guys hear me? We're gonna call the adults. Wait right there, you guys. What? What'd you say? We can't hear you, Haki. Takuya. Despite their shouting, the torrent of rain drowns out their voices. We gotta hurry across. That's dangerous. I don't think we should. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. No, it's not, Kazuya. It'll be fine. We can still make it across. Yeah, but... Natsu, we have to go now or we'll be stuck. Okay, it's dangerous, but let's try. Buffeted by the driving rain and powerful winds, the three of them look out towards the opposing shore. And he's gonna blame her because she said we should go. Um, Jesus fucking Christ, we were kids. Okay, the rain's starting to get a little weaker. Now's our chance. Natsuki, Spacey, and Kazuya set off across the path. Despite being slowed by water resistance, they manage slow progress. Urgh, I can't move at all. Try paddling with your arms. It might be easier. With great difficulty, they're able to continue. Just as they start approaching their destination... Ah! Kazuya's legs are caught by a rush of water. His whole body tumbles into the lake. Mm, ah! Spacey reaches her hand out towards Kazuya as he struggles. Kazuya, grab my hand! Uh, uh. He manages to grab Spacey's hand. But with the weight of the water soaking into his clothes, Spacey's tiny body isn't strong enough to pull him along. Ah! Eek! This time she eeks because she's a kid. Slowly, Spacey is dragged into the lake with him. No! Help! Help! I can't scream really loud. It's really late at night. Stay there! I'm coming right now! Natsuki dives into the lake, grabbing Spacey from behind. Natsu! <coughs> Natsu! It's okay, I got you! Natsu Natsuki treads water as best he can while trying to push Spacey back towards safety. Uh, <laughs> Throwing herself onto the path, Spacey heaves, sucking great gulps of air into her lungs. Natsuki pulls himself halfway out of the water, clinging to the path. Glad I managed to save you. Thanks, Natsu! <sighs> well, here, I have to help Kazuya, too. I'll be right back, don't worry. Soaking wet, Natsuki smiles at Spacey. A gentle smile as bright as the sun. Natsu! Wait! Natsu! But he sinks back into the water, disappearing from view. She reaches out, crying out as loudly as she can. But everything quickly becomes covered in a white fog. Nothing can be seen. Even the sound of their voices are drowned out. Natsu! Spacey! Natsu! Spacey! Kazuya! Hey, over here! Pull them up! The white fog becomes a black curtain and Spacey's memory cuts off. Now she sits in a daze, dressed in black. Before her is a black frame photo of Natsuki smiling broadly at the camera. Oh my god. Did he actually fucking die? It's a picture from summer camp last year. We went fishing in the river. It was a great time. Natsu was really good at it. And he caught lots of fish. We all roasted and ate them together. Spacey gazes at the photo, thinking of the past. Oh my god, did he actually... That's a fucking twist I didn't see coming. Like, we knew that Kazuya was, is in a coma, but Natsuki died? Oh my god, did he really? Oh my god! I didn't see that coming! Spacey gazes at the photo, thinking of the past. Why am I here? What's going on? 
This all feels like a dream. Like it isn't real. Kids were playing alone, unsupervised. The storm hit and they fell into the lake. Natsuki tried to help them. Kazuya still hasn't regained consciousness. Those poor things! Takuya and Aki moved away during summer break. Spacey is all alone now. Everyone is gone. Aki and Takuya? Where did Kazuya and Natsu go? Did they both move away too? When can I see them again? I wish I could see them. It's so fucking sad! Guys, it's so fucking sad! <laughs> okay, you gave your 12 points for I'm gonna cry. Not double points, because I'm not really gonna cry, but like... That is so fucking sad! Like, I really... Like, I'd want to be like, Oh my god, guys, I'm gonna cry! Seriously. That's really... Oh my god. I... I think Hakage really is the negative emotions in, but like, but it's not our fault. Holy shit. In waves, my memory comes back to me. My body weakens and I fall to the cold floor. I... <laughs> Looks like you've remembered. Yes, that's you. The you that you desperately wanted to forget. How does it feel now that your memories are back? Happy? Sad? Hmm. Certainly not happy. Your selfish behavior led to the death of a loved one. No. I didn't want to go back for the ribbon. What the fuck? And we were all kids. We all did something stupid. I... And the reason Natsu is dead? And why is he here? And the reason Kazuya won't wake... Woke up. Won't wake up? The reason everyone split up was because of me? Spacey, no! That was an accident! It's because I ignored Natsu's warnings and suggested we go to the manor. Spacey, get it together! Natsu and Kazuya, they were here all along, in this dark, sunless world, and it's all my fault. Spacey... Oh, Spacey. There was a deep-rooted fear of loss inside me, fear of losing where I belong, of losing my loved ones. Just thinking about it sends an excruciating pain shooting through my heart. I know, right? I thought that fear was because of what happened in this world. Damn, plot twist times two in this game. Like, I mean, Jesus. I didn't think... I didn't think Natsu was dead too. Jeez. Holy shit. It was my fault. But it was caused by something far more sinful. Something that runs much deeper. Guilt is far too light a word to describe it. Okay, we were all kids and we all agreed and we were all stupid. It's not just our fault. And that feeling stayed with me, even when I had no memory of it at all. Everything, all of it was my fault. Yes, that's right. It's all your fault. Your beloved Natsu is dead because of you. The twins were torn apart because of you. Your friends must roam this in-between world because of you. Everything... Everything. Everything because of you. You're the only one who didn't realize it. You're the only one that kept on living, free of worry, free of the weight of your sins. No apology could ever be enough. Perhaps instead, it'd be better if you were dead. <gasps> My breath cuts short as he speaks the words I'm thinking out loud. Shut your goddamn mouth, you bastard! Spacey, you can't listen to him! I were gone. I feel something shatter near my temple. Something black tumbles to the ground as my hair falls forward. My vision goes dark. I'm better off gone. You should just vanish. Vanish, vanish, vanish. N no! I can't scream really loud, sorry. A black mass in my heart explodes. A scorching heat rips through my body, burning away all sense of reason. Ugh! Can't think. Nothing makes sense. I don't want to remember anymore. My body feels like it's one massive fireball, burning and suffocating. I scream and claw at my throat. Ugh! Ugh! I can't get enough air. My breathing grows desperate. Not enough air. My body... Uh, my body starts to feel heavy, like I'm swallowing nothing but mud. Um, Calm down, Spacey. Spacey, no! Your place is here with us! 
Uh, uh. Black butterflies begin rising from my body. No, don't, don't do it. Billowing like smoke, they singe the bodies of the two people trying to help me, filling the room with a sooty, burnt smell. Uh, uh, I don't want to be weak anymore. Damn it, I'm not going to fail. I will save you. Uh, uh, okay, I can't really scream really loud, sorry. It's like really fucking late. My vision starts to cloud. My sense of mis my sense of myself as a human dulls. Amidst it all, I'm keenly aware of something happening. Akage picks up the object that fell for me earlier. A twisted smile on his face. At last, it's mine. The final shard. I could have taken it much sooner, but I prefer to save the best for last. The shard shines brilliantly as he holds it between his thumb and index fingers. No! Akage, you said you would save her! Why would you do this? What's that? You didn't enjoy my little sideshow. Sideshow? The only reason I cooperated with you was that so you would save with you was so that you would save her. You You took the ribbon from Spacey. That was a charm that protected her. But he told me she wouldn't be able to come back to life if she had it. So I <laughs> Shard in hand, Hikage walks back to the throne, his merciless laughter ringing through the room. You're quite funny. You really believed me. You... deceived me. Deceived? Oh no. You pretended as though you were. You trusted me? Impossible. You never did. You knew something was right, but you still had no choice but to obey me. That's right. You saw me up close. You knew who I was, but you just pretended not to see the inconvenient reality before you. Deep down, you're greedy, weak, and a cheat. A traitor who yearns for the light, clinging to hope. You want to return to the world of life with her at any and all costs. You didn't want to lose your one strand of hope, so you blindly followed along with what I said. And as a result, she's now teetering on the edge of despair. But I... Even if I... Like he has stutters and falls to his knees. Damn, this is so fucking good. How pitiful. Despite your love for one another, you cause so much pain for each other. Your souls earlier so full of love are now so full of hurt. Ugh, I simply love it. Before long, you too will be able to taste still deeper pleasures than this. Now. Kage walks over to the kaleidoscope. It is time. He tilts his hand over the top of it. Um, okay, hold on a second. Pause for two seconds. Yeah, so... Ooh. Um, I had to stop because that one part, remember, got cut off. So... Oh my god, this is so hard. I think we're gonna go a little over because that part was about 16. That's... We're a little over an hour right now. Um, but I feel like... This is, okay, we're going to have to go a little over. I don't know if we're getting to the end or we're going to have a little bit. I don't know, but we're going to get to a better stopping point than this. I don't know. Okay, he tilts his hand over the top of it. And the instant the shard reaches home, a single bullet grazes Hakage's hand. I won't let you do it. Spacey, me, and the others are going to use the kaleidoscope to go back to our world. You missed on purpose, didn't you? You didn't want to lose your one strand of hope. So you blindly followed along with what I said. As okay, that's the same exact line that he just said earlier. It's really weird when they don't put the right lines in, because I really feel like we're missing something, but... You wouldn't want to end up like that, would you? He points at me and cackles. You just threw a ball at me, bird. Where's the ribbon? Who has it? Yeah, who has it? I'm mm, sorry. The bird's playing and throwing toys, so I just threw it back at him. Uh, please stop. Just end this. My thoughts are hazy and vague. Uh, ah, I can't scream my loud, sorry. Uh, spacey. Uh, poisoned by my body, they writhe in pain. And yet they don't let go, even as blackness billows forth from me. Please don't get hurt because of me. T 
two of them could hardly stand. I slowly tear them off of me. Spacey. I look up slowly and my burned skin emits a horrible warped sound. Spacey, I just... wanted to be with you. I see Kagiha sitting on the floor in the distance. I hobble over to him. My step's weak. It's so sad! <laughs> Guys, one foot after the other. Oh. My legs are heavy like lead, but I continue to drag them along. I... I... No! Oh. Spacey. My monstrous appearance is reflected in his jade eyes. This is my heart. Everything... Everything about me is ugly. I'm weak, cowardly, unfair. I knew that's who I was, but I pretended not to see it. A veil of tears blurs my vision. I'm sorry. I just wanted us to be happy together. I knew it would all be destroyed if I remembered. Takuya, Kazuya, Aki, Natsu, I loved you all. If you had been there, if you had all been there, we would have been happy together forever. But it's all an illusion. It's not enough. It wouldn't let us move on. I was weak. I ran away from my past. I ran away from your death. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Over and over, I repeat my apology. Tears stream down my face, dripping from my chin. All I can do is repeat myself like a child. Spacey. Kagia smiles at me. Me, too. I didn't want the good times to end. I'm weak, too. I took advantage of your lost memories and hid the fact that I was already dead. I had no intention of telling you. I wanted to be a part of your future. I didn't want to be relegated only to your past. <laughs> Guys, that's so fucking beautiful! Oh, Jesus! Natsu, so, I don't hate you. And I don't regret my, regret my decision to save you, even though it cost me my life. The one thing I wish for... I'd want to come back to life and stand alongside you. I want to walk with you under the bright light of the sun once more. I wanted you to think about that sort of future, even if only for a short time. I'm sorry. It's my fault it all ended like this. I won't tie you down any longer. What are you... feel a smooth, silky sensation around my neck. Just as I realize it's the ribbon, the heat raging around me extinguishes. Oh, he's so fucking beautiful! God! He is, like, best boyfriend, though. He really is. Like, I don't know how you can, like, he just... He died for us, motherfuckers. Oh my god. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for coming here. When we were children... And now, I've always loved you. Natsu. He's gonna die. He's gonna disappear. Er Monshiro! I turn at the sound of a gunshot. A short distance away, Monshiro is down. One knee on the stone floor, holding his side. Well, well. You're not always quite so dull, are you? You actually believe you can take the kaleidoscope from me? Shut up. Your mouth. <laughs> the game is up. Now watch as the kaleidoscope is completed. God, God, this game is so good. We're like 10 minutes over. Okay, we sometimes have gone 20 minutes over. I just want to see something. I need to check something. Okay, we're still on. Oh, God, guys. Hold on a second. I want to see something. Um, I have a picture of the flowchart. Now that we're, I think we're getting close to the end. I just want to see something. Um, what are we in chapter seven? Oh, we still have one more fucking chapter in chapter set. Like we have chapter seven, three to go to, and then we get, and then I don't know. There's like three different endings. I'm not looking at them and I can't tell what's what. Like the, I can just see like the flow chart and see that there's another chapter after this. And then there's an epilogue and then there's three different 
like endings probably depending on what you pick but I don't know what the options are I just and actually I don't but so oh I don't want to end this here but we need to end this here because I don't think we're going to be able to get the last chapter and the epilogues that we need to get in the next because like the chapters are long we're not gonna be able to get them I was like if we're almost at the end maybe we'll keep going but we're like already probably about 10 minutes over so okay inconvenient ending but there's no place that's gonna be convenient in this chapter so I'm gonna end it here I'm sorry and okay don't feel bad because it's like fucking 1 30 in the morning right now I have to go to bed I cannot fucking record another part of this I can't stay up till like three o'clock in the morning. Like, cause I'll never sleep. Cause it's like one thirty on a Sunday morning. And like, if I get up at like 10 or 11 on sun, I'm never going to be able to go to bed and get up for work on Monday. So I have to go to bed now. Um, you know, I, I can't, I can't play another part. So I can't play another part to like tomorrow. So it's not just you waiting 24 hours. I'm, I'll be waiting less than 24 hours, but I still have to wait to figure out what's going to happen. So it's not just, I'm not just dicking you over. I'm not cock blocking you. I'm cock blocking me too, but you can count that on the board because we've already stopped in a million inconvenient locations, but this one is definitely points on the board because this is the most inconvenient ending ever. But anyway, um, I'm going to wrap this part up here. I will see you guys next time and we'll finish this. Hopefully see what ending we get and then we'll start going into a guide and trying to get all these other endings because I'm just like the flow chart's fucking huge dude like it's crazy um and I don't know and I think there's certain endings you can't get without doing other things so who knows what's gonna happen in this one um but yeah this is gonna be but still Natsu best boyfriend oh my god that's so sad I can't believe he's been dead this whole time <laughs> so many twists in this game and so far it hasn't literally made me ball my eyes out like seven scarlet so i'm okay with that like so far i mean we don't know what the ending's gonna be like but i don't know i'm, I'm okay with it so far because i have a feeling that kagia's endings will be good ones hopefully where we somehow get to be with him in the afterlife or we get reborn with him i don't, I don't know how it's gonna work but anyway um i'm hoping they're not depressing and sad like oh we go back to life and we remember him fondly and like no fuck that shit like no 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 you're not doing that to me but We'll find out. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.